agenda items tonight. First one is election of mayor pro tem. And what we're going to do is we'll take nominations from the floor. If I hear any nominations. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to feel like it kind of used to be a, a tradition of the council. We kind of strayed from that in recent years, but I feel like it used to be kind of the most senior member has always bestowed that honor to serve as mayor pro tem. And so I think at this point, the most senior interview member would be Alan Nix. So I'd point, like to nominate Alan Nix. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to nominate Brandon Huckabee. I'll second that. Any other nominations? Hearing none, we'll close nominations and we'll proceed to vote. We'll take one at a time. And we'll do a roll call vote. So, do we have to have a roll call vote for this? Stacey, that's why I was asking for Randy. Okay, we'll just take a voice vote then. We have a nomination, first of all, for Alan Nick for Mayor Pro Tem. All in favor, Alan, say aye. 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 Let's, okay, uh, let's do a roll call vote. Place one. I vote for Brandon. Okay, we'll just, we'll just do Alan right now. Alan, okay, Justin. Mr. Haskey. Okay. Next. I'll vote for Alan. Okay. Number one, Brandon. Brady? Aye. No. You're going to stay or you're going to vote? Uh, I'm going to vote yes. Okay. <laughs> Carol? No. Okay. Brandon. Okay. No. You have three fours. Let's go to that one. So it doesn't carry. Let's go to Brandon Huckabee. Place one. Aye. Place two, Justin. How you vote? You're cutting in and out, Justin. Yes. Yes, okay. Ricky? Yes. Gerald? Yes. Mr. Huckabee? Yes. Okay, we have five for Mr. Huckabee and three for Mr. Nix. Mr. Uh, Huckabee will be uh, elected, as elected as our mayor pro tem. Next item is consider approval appointments to council committees. Everybody got a list from Stacy. I sent out, asked her to send out the other day. Did it best, as always, try to do my best to make sure we spread them out and give them to the committees that you asked for. As always, we have eight times four, we have 32 appointments. Try to do my best to make sure we spread them out as far as responsibility and uh, the areas covered with your recommendations. Does anybody have a, a motion? I move acceptance of the committee uh, roster as presented. Second. Okay, Ricky seconds it. Any discussion? Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So we've now appointed committee committee members and committee chairs. I'm sorry, Justin, you don't, I'll get your vote in her. I guess he's on. No, he's off. Yes. Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> yes. We have, uh, thank you very much. Since that's all that's on our agenda tonight, we're going to stand at 5.33, adjourned. That is the record. No, it's not either. We had a, I did a minute one, didn't I? You did. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to stand adjourned at 5.33 from our regular city council meeting. Uh, thank you for committee chairs and for new mayor pro tem. And I will turn, we're going to then immediately at 5.33 turn into our uh, committee meetings. And we'll take, uh, Justin, are you going to be here or are you going to stay on the phone the whole time? I, I am on my way right now. All right, we're going to move you down just a little bit then and go to Public Works first. Uh, Mr. Nix. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I'm, I love this technology. Uh, it works so well for me. When your grandkids are around, right? When my grandkids are there to help me push the appropriate <laughs> buttons. Let me see if I can get this to pull up. Okay. Uh, it was requested of me that we go back and revisit the decision that we made uh, in March for the block of, of Graham, the 100 block of Graham Street. Uh, it, it was, it is the uh, intention of the Texas Department of Transportation to pay Graham from the South Loop all the way to the north side of town, which is what they're in the middle of doing now. Uh, if they do the paving on it, uh, it is all at their expense, and all of the maintenance on that roadway will be their expense also. Uh, 
it, it was questioned to me whether we wanted to, number one, be out the extra money since our budget is a little bit tight this year in the street department and for repairs, maintenance, et cetera, of which there's always more to do than we have funding for. And the other question was, who's going to maintain that? And TxDOT has made it pretty clear that if we ask for the bricks to be put in that particular block, even though it is a state highway, the city will become responsible for that. Uh, when the Brick Street District was laid out, it, it was intentionally left out. Graham and Washington both were left out because they are state highways and because we felt like it was best to let the, the state take care of their highways and to let the city maintain and, and continue to uh, improve the city streets that were under our control. Uh, this was a decision that has been made by the council and Mr. Williams kind of has the project on hold while he's developing the, the specs and while we're waiting for the bricks to be cleaned to go in that, that was another issue. We didn't have enough bricks that had been taken up and had been cleaned and were ready to go back in that block. Uh, it was felt like that it would expedite the process if we let them finish the, that block and put it back in asphalt as they had intended to do. It appears to me, to my untrained eye, that they're ready to, to do the base and put the, the first layer of asphalt down on that and we could be using that as we are the part south of the square to travel on if we were going to allow them to finish it. Uh, it it's a committee discussion. Uh, but I'm going to open it up to all the council. If anybody on the committee or council, either one, has input on this, if it's the will of the council that we leave it as it was decided, we will. If it's a question mark because of the immediate cost and the long-term cost to the city, I think that's worth considering also. <coughs> Sir, I was going to let your committee be sure they come talk before I said something. Well, I, I, I'm going to open it up to anybody because it it, it it is a it was a council decision that that was made at a special meeting that we had, and because the whole council was involved in that, even though it's a committee meeting, I'm going to throw it open to the, to everybody on the council to make comments on. Well, Mr. Chair is. <clears throat> member of the committee on uh, the council I, you know other than the bond uh, issue that would have changed the look of, of uh, Belknap Street and right around the courthouse uh, I don't see anything else that's, that's really changed on that uh, it, we the council allocated $300,000 for that to be done if we at some point in the future the citizens of this community want to go in and redo the square then uh, are you then they would have to go back in on Graham Street I guess and and uh, and at a very expensive proposition to go in and take out the pavement when you're as you can put it in now with the bricks and bricks have a lifespan of about a hundred years far longer than asphalt uh, as you know asphalt will last about 15 years and then it's going to have to be redone and and in between times uh, it's probably going to have to have overcoating and, and whatnot if you put concrete in it's going to take about 30 years or so and but if you put brick in you've got a pavement that's going to last for a hundred years so it makes a lot more sense to go ahead and do this now we've allocated it uh, I'm perfectly happy with uh, the decision the council has made that's my two cents I have a question for Nick Does it have <coughs> do you have a time frame do you know do you know a time frame of when you expect that change order back from TxDOT no I do not know when to expect that change order back from TxDOT but I would expect within the next 30 45 days they should have everything that they need 
turned back around to us. And then from there, how long do you think it would take to complete it? Well, I'd have to visit to with the contractor. Road, guess, to get the road open. The, the actual work um, will vary. I mean, June is historically our wettest month of the year. And so if the weather persists like it has been, it would be at least another probably 30 to 60 days after that pouring the concrete, laying the bricks, also very labor intensive. So uh, you're looking at several months to get that put back in. I, I wish I could give you a, a better time frame, but we just don't know. Did they have the specs for the con uh, not concrete, for the asphalt overlay <coughs> that they were anticipating? It, it would match what's going down now, yes, sir. So, so those are in place and ready to implement when it, whenever they have weather and time for meeting. Absolutely. That's okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I can tell you that since we mentioned the brick streets around the square, I have not heard one thing more positive from the citizens than about making the streets brick again around the square. It's an incredibly popular thing among the citizens, the ones who've called me, contacted me. And I think it's worth the time. It's, it's our investment. Uh, and at some point, we will do the square, the downtown business district, I believe, will be addressed again, like we had in the bond. And just like Gerald said, we're going to have to come back and we're going to tear it up and replace it at a higher cost, at a more expensive cost, at a more inflated cost as well when that happens. I think it needs to remain great. And we have a committee that we established. I established a committee, a citizens committee, to make recommendations on the brick streets as well. And part of that recommendation included, incl uh, there the, the staff even recommended going from Graham Street out past City Hall for the Brook Streets as well. Or was it an, even the next street past that maybe? So I believe we ought to keep it where it is, the money's allocated, and I think the citizens want it as well. If, if I remember correctly, we're, <clears throat> this says we're taking it out of this year's budget, but I thought that we had an overage from last year that was not used that we're using for a portion of this as well. Okay, so that's the total is 500. Okay. Um, the bond changed, but that's really all that's changed. I don't think the long term vision in playing herky jerky back and forth is, is a way to be successful. So uh, I voted for it the first time, and that's probably the way I'll stay. So. <coughs> Other input from council or committee? I will say I wish it would ha happen quicker, but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> what well, we've been closed for seven, eight months now, and part of that was contractor problems. So it wasn't all all this decision um, by far, uh, but uh, you know, I, I, we definitely need to speed up the process. What is the repair and maintenance cost of that one block? I mean, I mean, is there any way to estimate that? I mean, I guess it depends on the damage that would be done, but... Yes, There's a wide variable there. Yeah. Is it typically more expensive to maintain a brick road than it is an asphalt road? I guess it doesn't matter because the net sum would be either zero or what the cost would be. But what, what kind of delta do you see typically in in those scenarios on city streets? This is unlike any other street that we would have. We don't have any, quote, new brick streets with utilities under it. Shepard Street being by the museum is probably the best example of our newest brick street. So what we've done is just maintain what we have. Uh, your question about what does it cost to maintain them, well, we, we clearly haven't done that in decades. Right. So we don't really have a good handle on what it costs to maintain them. Right. Now, if the brick street were to go in with the 10-inch uh, concrete pan underneath it, the brick, the stabilized base, all of that, we would not anticipate any uh, repairs for several years, obviously. Um, and those repairs could be the results of truck damage, which we wouldn't anticipate, or if there's utility damage, obviously it would cost more on that section than it would, say, Vanderbilt Street, who doesn't have that kind of but if, underneath it. But if we go in on a state highway and tear it up, we've got to bring it back up to the level that it's That's correct, at yes, anyways. So really there's no difference there then, essentially. 
than any other circumstance where we have to rip the street so up. So if it was put back in asphalt and we had a water main blowout, we would, uh, yes, sir, we'd have to come back in there and make the repairs mm -hmm. ourselves. Too. Right. And, and all utilities are new under this, right? All water lines and sewer is brand new under this. Yes, sir, that's correct. Is there a warranty on their work on that? There is a one-year warranty on the water and sewer line work that goes in there. Um, but it doesn't cover <coughs> streets. I'm just covering all the bases. It, it's a warranty, so okay. whatever it costs to put it back. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Do I have a a motion or a recommendation from the committee to take back to council or I can take it back to council and report that we discussed it and recommend to move forward with it. What's the pleasure of the committee? You move forward with what? Move forward with the brick street I, I would, that was I, presented. I don't know that I need to make a motion, but I would recommend that before it's presented, I need to make a motion. I will. I would I need, do I the same. I'd make a motion that we move forward with <coughs> continuing the Brick Streets uh, portion of the ramp. I second it. We've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. That's the report that will go back to the committee. Thank you, Mayor. That's the end of mine. Thank you. Justin, we're back to you then. Finance Committee. All right. Have you got your computer turned on yet? I do. We can get, we get Alan's grandkids up. I think it too real quick. I know it. I know <laughs> it. Much quicker than I can. Just like my five-year-old can. Uh, Mayor, it was uh, brought to my attention um, that uh, we need to review a waiver request from Habitat for Humanity, and Mr. King has the details on that. Yes, sir. Uh, on March 5th of 2019, uh, the council uh, did give a $1,500 waiver in landfill fees to Habitat for Humanity at 754 West Sloan Street. Uh, they recently uh, did demolition on that property so they can construct a, a new building. And when they did, the landfill fees went way over the $1,500. And so uh, they're here tonight and would like to discuss with the Finance Committee the possibility of another waiver. So. Stacy? Yes, please. You, yes, right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, the history behind that is it, it was a four to three vote for $1,500. And part of the reason why it was a little split like that is because we didn't have a clear plan on what we were doing. When we came before the council in 19, we knew that we needed to clean up that place but we didn't know what our finances were going to look like as far as demoing it and <clears throat> building something else building a house there or whether we would just clean it up and sell it so we didn't have a clear plan on what we were going to do and so some members of the council at that point um, were hesitant to apply or, or to approve more or even that amount because we didn't have a clear plan we have a clear plan now um, in fact some of it's already been done. The house is not there. Um, we are planning on, it's zoned B2, so we are planning on building Erath County Habitat for Humanity, a home of its own. After being here since 1997, we're finally at a place where we would like to build a home for Habitat. Um, and we will have some storage at the back and we're hoping to actually have some office space at the front. We have been meeting in other offices, other businesses, other banks, conference rooms since 1997 and would really like to have some space. That being said, our budget, as you all know, um, is small. Shoestring is not even the correct term. Um, so $3,000 extra just in demo before we're even getting into the infrastructure and permitting and curb gutter and sidewalks and the cement cost that this is going to cost. Um, $3,000 is, is a big blow just to even get started. Um, I, I do understand that this has already been done and we're approaching you after the fact. Um, but I did want to give you a little information on the reason why a larger amount wasn't approved in the beginning and update you on where we're at, the vision that we have going forward, the difference it's going to make in that neighborhood 
once we get a building, um, some security. That was one of Mr. King's big requests when we even started talking about this, is that's an area that will definitely benefit from some security. That house had not had utilities going to it, not even electricity since I guess 11. And so having a new facility there, security, people coming in and out, already zoned B2, is going to do wonders for that neighborhood. And um, it, it's a, you can see the property when you come over Tarleton, um, the railroad tracks as well. So it, it's going to definitely be an attribute for this community. Do you have any questions for me? Committee? Finance Committee, have any questions mm -hmm. for Stacy? Was, was there timeline any idea? Yeah. No. Um, between fundraising and all the things that go along with, you know, the permitting, where actually it's two plots. There's a, a lot that is at actually considered 750 West Sloan. That's only 20, 25 feet frontage. And then the 754 Sloan, which is, I think, 70, 75 feet frontage, something like that. So we've got to, and I just found out today that that 750 is actually R3, and then the 754 is B2. So we've still got to go through rezoning and then replatting, and so, no, I have no idea on a time frame, but I'm sure you guys will be seeing me. This is, is there, uh, the, the site's completely cleared out, correct? There's it no, is completely no more, cleared out. No more that needs to go to the land. No. We even had, when the excavator was there, he even um, got the stumps out that from big trees that had been cut down. So it is, it is cleared. Mr. Chair, I make a motion uh, to approve a waiver amount of three thousand three dollars and sixty cents for habitat improvement. There's a second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And that concludes the finance report, Mayor. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Cook. Yes, Mayor. <coughs> The nominations committee uh, <clears throat> has several applicants. In fact, we've had a really uh, good uh, a number of applicants in for different boards and commissions. We have a few vacancies. We have uh, on Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, we have place five uh, that's vacant. On the Senior Citizens Advisory Board, we have Place 2 that's vacant. On Planning and Zoning, we have Place 5 that's vacant, and also an Alternate 1 and Alternate 2. Normally on Planning and Zoning, however, we interview the applicants. As we do on Board of Adjustment, we have three alternate positions on Board of Adjustment. <coughs> we have no... We have no... Uh, applicants for Board of Adjustment uh, at this time, but we do for the others. And also tonight we have got uh, the board for Main Street, the advisory board for Main Street. And we have seven positions there. We have uh, six people who have uh, applied for Main Street. Uh, and uh, so, uh, <clears throat> if we could, uh, let is, let's uh, consider the Main Street uh, program first, if you don't mind. We have down here, we have, uh, <clears throat> of the applicants, we have Tyree Slappy. And we had talked to him last fall, if you recall, and we let it be known to him at that point. He has applied again, by the way. And, and let it be known to him as soon as we had a Main Street uh, a board, uh, advisory board 
done that he would be considered for that and he has applied for it at this time. Uh, we have Lisa Pendleton. Uh, we have Julie Lowrance. We have Rita Cook. We have Stephanie Beach. And we have Jeffrey Hamilton who put down this as his uh, uh, second uh, choice. That would be six. He put as his first choice Parks and Recreation and his second choice is this one. He is a business guy and, and pretty well known so <clears throat> I thought it since he is the only one that put down the other one I guess that put down Main Street that we uh, would give us an opportunity to get six people on uh, uh, the Main Street Advisory. So uh, what does the committee think? Uh, forgive me, Gerald. Remind yes, me, Justin. Did you say six? We Is have seven positions. We've got six people okay. that have applied for it. We make the motion we appoint those six. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <laughs> there you go. I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> right, or a second. I would second that. Oh, we got a second yeah. here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> we have a motion in a second that we approve the six people that I've just named to the uh, Main Street Advisory Board. Uh, all in favor? Please aye. say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. It's going to be a Thank recommendation you. back to the council. That will be a recommendation to the council. Right. That is a recommendation. Next we have <clears throat> we have a uh, planning and zoning and I and I need the uh, committee's advice on this particular thing. We have two people that put down planning and zoning. One is a first choice. We have one position on planning and zoning and we have two alternate positions on planning and zoning. We only have two people here. On planning and zoning, we have Nick Robinson, and I think everybody here is pretty familiar with Nick, uh, a former, uh, just went off uh, city council, and he has served on planning and zoning before, and uh, as well as uh, as well as this council, of course. And then uh, we have uh, Mary Beach McGuire, who put this, uh, uh, her first uh, choice was uh, uh, CETA. Of course, there's not an opening on CETA. Her second choice was planning and zoning uh, commission. Uh, we normally interview for planning and zoning, and I say normally, I think that has been kind of the process we've done uh, with council approval on, uh, we've done that for planning and zoning, board of adjustment, and CETA uh, in the past. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to have your opinion as to uh, what you think here. Uh, should we interview Nick and uh, and interview Mary Beach McGuire for uh, two of the positions that's available on planning and zoning? If so, we can set up a meeting and do so before the next. Uh, uh, before this goes to council on June the 1st. Mr. Chair, it would be my recommendation that because Mr. Robinson has served on PNC and on the council and we're reasonably familiar with him, that we could appoint him to fill the vacancy that would put the PNC commission back up to full staff and we could interview the other applicant then at a later date for one of the alternate spots. Justin, how, are you, how do you feel? Um, um, I think that, I mean, if she's willing to serve as an alternate, she'd, we'd be happy to listen to, to her. What, what's the timeline to get a, a committee? Well, we'd probably have it 
<clears throat> we'd probably have it right around June the 1st. Okay. That would be the Tuesday uh, or the Monday before June the 1st. Okay. Sure. Then I'd, I'd be good with that, that kind of turnaround. I'd okay. give it the potential to get it done ahead of the... Well, no, I guess there's going to be a P&Z meeting this wow. week. No. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, so it won't happen before then, but... Well, we're not going to have... Either one. It's not going to go to council, council, council before, before then way, anyway, so... so. Yeah, then I'd, I'd be good with uh, the nomination of Nick and then giving Mary a chance to come and talk before the, the committee to ask some questions. Okay. Leanne, do you have any comments about it? Okay. I agree. Okay. So, <clears throat> would you like that in a formal I motion? would. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> wants to make one. I would make the motion to appoint Nick Robinson to fill the vacancy at place five <clears throat> on planning and zoning. Uh, and to interview Mary Beach um, McGuire uh, at a later date, as soon as is possible for her scheduling hours uh, to fill one of the alternate positions. Do I hear a second? I, I think uh, Mary would be willing to serve if if we're willing to, to appoint. I think she just kind of articulated yeah, she that. Just, <laughs> she just said she's willing to serve as alternate. Yeah. Okay. So that so we, are you modifying your no, so you your, want to modify the motion or do you want to interview she's her? Good knowledge it's yeah. not necessary for me to interview her i know her yeah but okay if it's the pleasure of the committee <coughs> then we'll appoint both I, of them and yeah recommend. what what do you I'd think modify the, i'd like to modify Please the modify mm -hmm. I'll, to, to I'll, add I'll mary add, to appoint mary <coughs> as well. okay it is ben I'll and Justin, I'll modify the motion to appoint Nick to the vacancy and Mary to the alternate number one. And okay. I'll second. And we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Well, that will go as a recommendation <coughs> to the council then. Thank you. The. Um, We have a uh, one position open on the Parks and Recreation, and that's place five, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. We have several people that have indicated an interest in that. Yeah. We have several people that indicated an interest in that, um, and all the, uh, those are Carrie Strohmeyer, Dallas Rayburn, and Kendall Hurley. Uh, and I don't know if everyone knows these people or not. Um, Jeff Hamilton had also in, uh, indicated an interest, but we just put him on the uh, Main Street Advisory. <coughs> so, <clears throat> the um, so these three people of these three people they are all pretty solid candidates it looks like uh, from uh, from the list uh, I have uh, I know I have visited with Kendall Hurley and uh, I know uh, I know Carrie Strohmeyer I do not know Dallas Rayborn uh, looks like he had some experience it looks like he's had some experience also and all I uh, <clears throat> I frankly <clears throat> I think of the three uh, personally I would uh, Kendall Harley at uh, Tarleton is uh, I've heard pretty close to uh, uh, to the president. <laughs> you might say that uh, is one thing she has indicated to me an ex a, a very sincere interest in being on the uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Um, I would uh, 
I would recommend that we give serious consideration to her. <coughs> and, but I'll open it up to the others. <coughs> Any comments? I met with or visited with Kendall, and I think she'd make a, a good member of that committee. Right. That advisory board. Anyone else? It would bring a lot of. It would obviously bring a lot more assistance <coughs> also, and some help from Tarleton, even though we have a council member who works there as well. It brings some more attention to the university when we're looking for help from the university, etc. So I think it'd be a good appointment. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Justin, Leanne. I, yeah, I think I think Kendall would be good. Um, anytime we talked about this the other day at the council <coughs> meeting, that uh, anytime municipal municipalities have an opportunity to share <coughs> cost or services. In the community that they're in, um, that certainly provides a benefit to the taxpayers in that in that taxing district. So, I think uh, I, I know Kendall is, um, you know, her her relationship and connections at Tarleton maybe bring some opportunities there. So, Leanne, I agree. I I know Kendall. She's I think she'd be a good fit for that. Any comments? I, I, unfortunately, I do not know her. I've, I've worked with Kerry in the past. And I know he's very dedicated and, and he has experience in that particular area in a number of different ways. If you look at his application, the things he's done in the park system. And he, he's the only one of the three that I really know. But y'all are apparently all very convinced that that she would do a, a good job and perhaps have an inroad into the Tarleton system as well I think that would probably be good do I hear a motion I'll make a motion to appoint Kendall in the vacant spot on the parks board second I hear a second second can't get it from you but I can get it from I'll second it <clears throat> thank you man uh, any further discussion I'll only say one thing. We have three good candidates here, and I think that we need to keep these open because there will be uh, some additional uh, openings uh, as we go through the year. And, and as you know, we have to do that, and these should come uh, up, to the, up to the top. So all in favor of Kendall Hurley for uh, to be uh, recommended to the Council for Parks and Recreation Board. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Yeah. We will recommend her. The last one that we have <coughs> to do is the senior citizens. Uh, we have, and folks, this is a little bit unusual. We have three candidates for one position on the Senior Citizens uh, Advisory Board. We have Debbie Watson, uh, and Debbie lists her address as Bluffdale. Now, uh, we have uh, Elizabeth Johnson uh, here in Stephenville, and we have Donna Wesson. Uh, in Stephenville. They have all indicated uh, this is their number one choice. Um, now do we have Stacy uh, with regard to any uh, rules that we have with regard to someone living outside the city on the Senior Citizens Advisory Board? It only says that at least four members of the board must be residents of the city. Okay. So that's why their address is for y'all. Okay. So that is not a problem. <coughs> Does anyone know or would like to recommend any of these three people? 
I know both Elizabeth and, of course, Donna Wesson was a, taught here forever, and multiple of us probably had her in class. Um, and I've worked with Elizabeth since she's been with Meals on Wheels. I think either one of them would be great candidates. I don't know Debbie Watson. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, the only thing I know is that the Debbie Watson has been very grassroots involved in the Senior Center. And I think that's mm -hmm. the reason Ms. Wesson even applied, is because Debbie Watson on okay. social media and different mediums has um, been very proactive about things. So They have all indicated a really a great interest in doing this. So any other comments with regard to any of these three candidates? I, I know the, the connection that Elizabeth Johnson has to the seniors is a very intimate one. Yes. And uh, I mean, the things that, that uh, Meals on Wheels does, maybe there's a, maybe there's a way to, to coordinate or, or share services or workload, you know, between the city and Meals on Wheels as well. So, you know, I think, I think she'd be a great fit. I don't know the other two, so. Uh, okay. How about you, sir? Well, I, I know Donna Wesson, and I, I feel like she would be uh, a person who would serve well there. Sadly, I don't know the other two, uh, but the one that works with Meals on Wheels obviously has connections to that community. Yes. So that, that might be an advantage there. I just don't know. But I, since I don't know her, I don't, I don't have any background on her or uh, Miss Watson either one. Do I hear a motion for any one of these particular people? Is that I make a motion to appoint Elizabeth Johnson to the vacant spot. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? For Ms. Johnson. For Elizabeth Johnson uh, to, uh, to be uh, <coughs> nominated for the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory Board. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. It's <laughs> <laughs> confused. <laughs> all right. Very good. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, we are uh, we're through with our uh, nominating committee. Development committee. All right. We'll jump right into it and uh, welcome to the new committee. Mr. Cook, Mr. Thurman, and Mr. Trussell. Let's continue to make Stephenville a great place for business to come. First thing we're going to tackle is something we've been talking about for a little bit. Uh, staff was previously assigned to initiate actions to review permitted uses uh, throughout uh, because of a, a case that came in front of us at last, uh, last council meeting, I believe, um, and issued um, PNZ um, mentioned that they'd like to look at them. Um, so Mr. Uh, Killen has looked at those, um, and what we've kind of found is that there is several things that, that need quite a, quite a look at. Um, no, the, the last thing that we talked about was a tattoo parlor um, and how they are zoned in an industrial area um, and how that really doesn't fit with <coughs> anybody around us or any kind of other forms. What we've since found out is there's quite a few... Uh, of these usage usages that really just doesn't make a lot of sense. Bakery is one of them that is in, depending on what you use, is in about five different zones. So, and none of the same. So, things that really need some fine tuning. So, um, what we wanted to do tonight is kind of talk about that as a committee. Um, if we want to move that forward to PNZ to have a discussion, what we want them to have that look like, um, you know, what kind of scope we want them to do. Do we want them to take care of uh, the issues that are kind of most pressing? Um, Steve can, can speak uh, if you'd like, but we've had, we've had several businesses come in recently uh, about usage in different areas um, that doesn't really fit, but we know is happening and works. Uh, makeup, one of, permanent makeup is one of those things that's, that's licensed. 
Um, we know that that's nearly probably in every beauty parlor or thing that we have. Um, and they really would only be able to be in an industrial environment based on the way our zoning looks now. Um, it's my recommendation that we take a small chunk of these and have PNC do this at a workshop tomorrow and maybe have three to five of these that they work on to bring back and let's look at what category they're in. Um, and then as we continue keep this document alive, if we look at a more comprehensive plan that we, are, we look at all of these things as we continue to, to update our zoning um, to more reflect to more the community as a whole and, and um, where we're moving. So I'll open it up for comments uh, through the committee. And then we'll, committee first, and then we'll go to the council as a whole. So oh, are you recommending, you recommend they just take one particular type of zone and look at that? I would I and recommend changes within it, or, or, or are you talking about what specific? I, I would I would recommend types? looking at sp sp specific uh, businesses um, that we know that we have issues with that have come to Steve, um, and and try to fix those that we know are known issues, um, and then continue down this path to fixing this as a whole instead of just diving off into the weeds. But let's get what we know needs to be fixed. fixed. Are there other issues that have come to you besides artistic realm, like besides the tattoo shop issue? The tattoo shop is definitely the, the most recent, and then uh, surprisingly, the very next day is when we were approached about the semi-permanent uh, makeup. Um, and as Mr. Ruffby said, that we know that's around town. It's it's in various districts. These two ladies wanted to do everything uh, by the book, so they approached us. Looking at uh, how they're licensed, they're licensed exactly as a tattoo artist. <coughs> so the answer was that's really only for an industrial district, even though we know that, um, to your point that she made, that it's all across town. So I did mention that we were coming here and we were hoping to have a quick solution. I haven't had uh, any others really approach me about a conflict within the zoning districts, uh, but I do have some that just looking at that list, once we put it in table format, it kind of made it a little easier to see. Uh, where we have some in certain districts and then not allowed in others when you compare it to a similar business it, Those businesses may be in in a B2 district for example, but but uh, the tattoo shop only in industrial so um, If I were to recommend just a handful of them, of course, it would be the tattoo shop uh, salon personal services registered family homes uh, we have that only in one particular district. I know that uh, on some of those group home settings, we, we by law have to make reasonable accommodations. So I, I think that would be something worth exploring. Um, and then the residential uses that are specified in these these districts, and what I put in your packet, I didn't include the R1, R2, R3, the residential uses. I only included the commercial type uses or commercial type districts. So. Um, but some of these districts uh, specify residential uses uh, in these districts as well. And so I, I think it would, would be wise for us to review those and make sure that we still feel comfortable with where those residential uses may fall within these more commercial type uh, zoning districts. So those would be the, the handful that I would suggest um, if we only wanted to take kind of a, a targeted approach. Will there be a point that we would look at all the rest of them too? <clears throat> For instance, Absolutely. I've known some communities that right now <clears throat> the catch-all in Stephenville is industrial zone. I mean, literally, you can put anything in there, it seems like. <clears throat> That's not necessarily the way it is in other places. They set aside the industrial zone it's either light industrial heavy industrial and that's if they're not manufacturing something making something or warehousing something it doesn't nothing gets in there other than that and and so it can be different i mean we, uh, but then they will use those other they'll use the the uh, the uh, uh, business zones uh, that you would have b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 you know, whatnot. 
to catch <clears throat> the things like you're talking about too. Yes. So are we talking about an in-depth look at it like that? Well, I know that we, we have been discussing the need to review our comprehensive plan, and I, I think coupling this with that particular effort might be a good approach. Um, and then, of course, we're, we're looking for a, a candidate for the city planner position, which we could uh, have hyper-focused on this project. So um, certainly open to guidance from the council, and I know Mr. King has been talking to some other resources about our comprehensive plan. So. Um, all of that is uh, great momentum that we have, um, and mainly tonight I was hoping that we could just get some direction on how far do, does the council want us to go on this review, if it's a uh, review in totality, what the, what the uh, schedule would look like in your mind so that we can call the special meetings as necessary to try to accomplish the goal. Well, it would seem to me like that we need to address those issues that are fairly current that have been brought out that are problems for us right now, but we've got to look at it in the, in the, in the total picture here because a lot of these things, it looks like they need adjustment. Yes, sir. Mr. So Committee Chair. And, and maybe with a comprehensive uh, plan process, maybe that's the way to do it, but you're talking about a good long ways off. Yes, sir. Overall, there's roughly 175 permitted uses listed in the zoning code across yeah. the districts. Um, and a lot of that, it's li the way it's listed in the subdivision ordinance is just by uh, each zoning district and not in a table format. And I think that leads to errors on staff part and then also uh, confusion for some of the developers. So uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvement, obviously, and it's just the, the scope of the project that um, I'd request some direction on yeah I, and I, I'm not on your committee do you mind I just yeah. I know one thing that has been brought to my attention as it relates to zoning is food trucks so I don't know if that's something that y'all are considering or. I think if I think if staff could just present maybe specific for, for the time being so that we can get some of these obvious ones taken care of maybe 10 specific categories to be looked at and determine how they need to be changed that way there's because some of them are just blatantly obvious they're not going to require a whole lot of thinking I don't think to, to fix so and then we can move forward with a more comprehensive plan the only thing I was going to offer to ask if people on the food truck deal but also the second one I had was Maybe I'm an internal optimist, but the liquor might be something we need to address also. <laughs> Slightly premature, but still. Well, it's something that's we got open. It's something we're going to have to. It's something we're going to have to, gonna have to, <coughs> have to address absolutely. Well, and some of those things that maybe maybe there could be some new new items on that yep. list. It doesn't have to be ten that are mm -hmm. on the front list. So. Yep. There. I agree. I think we need to take a handful and try to expedite that. Okay. so that we can tackle issues that we know are great. Is there a, we've kind of heard 30 to 5 to 10, do we want to just task P and Z and Steve to come with us with maximum of 10 changes or, or areas of change? We've been talking about this. Is that too much? 10 may be a, 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 five. Bit, a bit five much. Five. We can five. probably move on five pretty quickly. A five a week. Can we put the top <laughs> list and see if the most two recent ones? Yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think it'd be what Brady says is true. I think that there's a good chance we may have another zoning issue that so I'd put that one on the list too in the top five. Yeah. Agree. And thank you for putting this in a chart because when you put it in a chart, yeah. it really shows you the issues that we have in the face. So. Pretty enlightening. Oh, so do we don't need to make a motion on that. He just needs direction for one. Do you feel comfortable from the committee? Yes, sir. I believe so. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. In, any other comments from committee or council members? If, if not, that will wrap up uh, the Development Services Committee.
Having nothing else on the committee reports or on the agenda tonight, it is 624 and we'll stand adjourned.